Welcome back to the wood shop. My name's Brett. Today's video is going to be about my new miter gauge, uh, which is the Incra 1000 miter gauge. And I'm also going to be doing an unboxing of the miter express table saw sled also from Incra. So I have this miter gauge currently set up for the job site saw on the left side of the blade, which the blade does tilt to the left and I have it set up for the left miter slot, but uh, the fence only goes on the right side on the job site saw. So that's why I set it up on the left side of the blade. But here at home, I want this miter gauge to be set up on the right side of the blade. So I'm gonna be making adjustments to the miter gauge and I'll show you that. And then we'll get into putting together the miter saw sled. The first thing I need to do is get the guide bar to fit in my slot because um, currently it doesn't wanna slide in. Well. Okay, <laughs> it didn't before, Well, it's not sliding very easily. So anyway, I need to make adjustments. Um, and to make that easier too, I'm just gonna remove the fence. In order to remove the fence, there's two cap screws here on the back side of the fence that, that you need this special tool. Uh, it's a ball head, I'm not sure what it's called. It comes with the miter gauge but it's kind of a specialty tool. I kind of wish that they had other ways to make these adjustments without this tool, so don't lose it. Just loosen these two cap screws. And then the fence slides right off. It's extruded aluminum T-track. And then we'll move it over to the right slot, and then you have this tiny little Allen wrench to adjust these discs. These white ones are uh, plastic that just kind of smashes down to make the bar wider, and the black ones are more rigid. Uh, you can totally remove the black ones, which it looks like I might need to do, because that it seems to be what's interfering with sliding well in my miter slot. I'm just gonna loosen up these white ones, see what happens there. Yeah, we're hitting the, hitting the black one. So I'm gonna take that out. This was the first table saw sled I made about five years ago when I first started woodworking. Uh, I believe it was pretty square. Um, I haven't used it in a long time, so I don't really remember. But what I found was that it was a bit too narrow. There were lots of times where I had a wider piece that I wanted to make a cross cut on and it just wouldn't fit in here. So um, it turned into a dado sled and still could be used for that, I guess. Then I made this one, which is much wider, but I made it kind of hastily and out of inferior materials. So the bed had a lot of flex to it and it was only square on this side of the cut. This side was not reliable. So uh, I saw another woodworker on YouTube with a much narrower sled um, with an open back end. So I thought, well, maybe I could turn this into that. So I cut this part off and just had this for narrow cuts but th this is even worse and uh, less reliable because it's got a lot of play in it and a lot of flex in the platform so it's not a great crosscut sled and that is why i got the crosscut sled from incra with my new incra miter gauge okay let's get to the unboxing of the miter express table saw sled As you'd expect, everything's pretty nicely packaged and protected. Got a clamp, some double stick tape, instructions, the two panel pieces, and the guide bars that they attach to, and some hardware. Hardware in here. Nope. Oh. Rest is just cardboard. 
First step is to decide if you're going to be setting this up on the right side or the left side of the blade. As I already discussed, my blade tilts to the left, so the directions recommend that you set it up to the right side of the blade if your blade tilts left. So that's what I'm going to do. Then the next step is lining up these panels and connectors and then using the hardware packs which are really nicely labeled and I completely appreciate that. We got C13, C14, and C15. So this is the hardware pack for this step. We don't need this. And also this guide plate is lined up so that the small T-slot here is on the side of the blade. So in other words, we don't want it set up this way. Another thing that will clue you in is there's a little caution arrow saying this is where the blade is. This part's kind of self-explanatory. The short machine screws go in the holes to attach to the aluminum plate. And I'm gonna hand tighten these. I didn't want to over tighten them and strip anything with the driver. Here's an amateur pro tip for you. Make sure that you're looking very closely at the directions because it has both uh, for the left layout and the right layout. So make sure that you're following the pictures and the directions uh, for the correct side of the blade. Because the way I lined this up at first was with this aluminum bar right over where the blade goes. And obviously that's not going to work. This is how it should have been. This is a, a drop plate and we're going to cut this in a subsequent step. But first let's get these panels attached to the right place. Okay, next step is to make sure that uh, this miter bar is sliding nicely in our miter slot with no slot. So it's a little bit loose right now. I'm just going to take the Allen key and go along and snub those up just gradually in all the spots. Next we're going to raise the blade and cut the drop panel. Now we can get this piece out of the way for the time being and make sure that our other miter bar fits in our miter slot and slides freely without slop. And then we're going to get this part of the table out of the way a little bit because we're going to be trimming off this part of the drop panel. Um, so we'll find the pre-drilled holes. Um, I would like to use this one, but it doesn't actually cross the blade, so we're going to have to move it over to this slot. And then that way, that's the least amount of trim off the drop panel. And if you notice here, we got access holes for the, um, for the miter bar. If you don't like the fit, you can make adjustments right through the panel. I'm going to use these four longer screws 
to attach this panel to the miter bar. Then we'll go ahead and raise the blade back up and trim off the rest of this panel. Save this piece, don't throw it away just yet. It may come in handy in a future step or a modification that you might want to make. If your table saw has a T-slot miter slot, they have T-slot retainer clips that you can install on either end. These plastic strips have adhesive on one side and they serve the purpose of raising the sled up slightly from the height of the drop panel. And they also reduce friction for a smoother glide. Now it's time to drop our miter gauge into the saw slot. Um, it, this Inkra Miter Express table saw sled is designed to work with any miter gauge. So it'll work with the miter gauge that came with your table saw. Um, I just happened to buy these two together at Rockler and link in the description below by the way. But this slot where the miter bar goes does not have a T slot. So if your miter bar has a T slot retaining clip, you're not gonna need that. So go ahead and remove that. My job site saw did have a T-slot and so make sure I keep track of that. Don't lose that little screw. And then you can position the, the miter bar wherever it makes sense for your cut. If you're doing small pieces, you can have your miter gauge closer to, uh, further up on the sled. If you're doing bigger pieces, you can position it way back here. Uh, and there are pre-drilled um, screw holes for uh, for these cam nuts that came in the second packet, C14, and their accompanying Allen key. I'm gonna have to mount a magnetic strip to the wall next to my table saw so I can keep track of all these specialty Allen keys and stuff. You want your first cam screw to be closest to your uh, miter gauge protractor and the other two just somewhere along the miter bar. Just getting these started. And I don't know if you can see that these, the threaded part is offset from center that's what makes it a cam so as you tighten or loosen it it'll move toward or away from the miter bar drop that in and then snug those up and you just want to verify that that's in there nice and tight off camera i made an auxiliary fence from an mdf trim board the instructions detail where to drill the holes and the kit comes with hardware to attach it to the fence. One more feature I'll mention is the hold down clamp. It comes with five pieces, it slides in there, bolt up through the bottom, washer over the top of that, star knob down on top of that. And now we've got material hold down in Either this slot or this slot. Let's do this one that's closer to the cut. Hmm. 
that's not awesome it's kind of it's pulling it this way what if, what if we flip this around we'll do the same thing that seems to be okay Well, now that I've gotten it all set up and I've had a chance to make some cuts on it, I'm really happy that I got this. I think this is really going to make my table saw a lot more versatile, uh, a lot more accurate with cross cuts and miter angles that I can't do or prefer not to do on the miter saw. So I think this was a good purchase for me in my shop. I hope this video was helpful to you in some way. If you like this kind of content, let YouTube know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button. That would help a lot. Thanks. So until next time, my friends, be safe and love each other.